Okay, so um, when you're finding a limit, uh, when you're finding a limit that looks like this, um, to actually find, okay, what, what we can see here, so because this is a cumulative review, we're at the end of the course, so what you might notice is that this is in the, um, the derivative format, like it's the definition of a derivative. So we're actually finding a derivative here, it's not just any regular old limit, we're finding the, the slope of a tangent line at a point. And so if you notice, we have 1 over something squared. So 1 over the function looks like 1 over x squared. And the, uh, the point of tangency looks to be 3, right, at x equals 3. So we're finding the derivative at x equals 3, all right? Now, uh, we, have, we have the ability to see that now. We didn't see that back then. So if you're presented this on the, on the exam, yeah, you would have to find the limit. So you could do it a different way, noticing that this is a actual, we're looking for a derivative. So what you'd have to do is you'd have to simplify the top, okay, uh, somehow um, by getting a, uh, either you know, a common denominator or somehow we'd have to get this, we have to get this H, um, we have to get this H out of here if we can, right? Um, so uh, how do we how do we do that? Well, you you could just uh, I guess the simplest thing would be to see that to get a common denominator, both uh, fractions need the nine and both fractions need this three plus h squared. So really we could write this like this, and again this is a tricky one too. It's a little bit more work, but um, we could go uh, nine over. 9 times 3 plus h all squared minus, and we're getting a common denominator over here, we've got to multiply top and bottom by 3 plus h all squared over 9 times 3 plus h all squared. So we, you see we get a, a common denominator there all over h. Okay, <clears throat> how does that help us? Well, we can rewrite this now again because we have a common denominator, we can write this, this whole thing just as one, uh, one unit. So that's going to be 9 minus, technically, this whole expression of 3 plus h squared. This is all going to be over this, 9 times 3 plus h squared. And because we're dividing also by h, it's really 9h times 3 plus h squared, because if you, you multiply by an h down there too, so we divide by the h as well. So you can write that just in one single thing. So we're getting, we're getting close, I think. I think we're getting uh, close. Now I, what I want to do is I want to expand this and gather all like terms and then see if we can factor an h out of the top. So this is h approaches 0. This is going to be 9 minus, this is going to be 9 um, plus 6h plus h squared. gathering like terms here. So we have 9 minus 9, so the 9's are gone, right? I have negative 6h minus h squared when I distribute that. Now notice I'm not expanding the bottom. I'm not expanding the bottom. I don't need to. You don't need to expand the bottom because notice that this whole thing, like this uh, 3 plus h all squared, that's like two factors of 3 plus h. And this is not providing a problem at all. If I substitute h, if h goes to 0, this whole thing becomes 3 plus 0 squared, you see? Uh, so I, I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to expand it or get rid of it. I can just leave it there. What I do want to notice, though, is I, I want to factor an h out, right? And I'm left with negative 6. My, you can factor a negative h out if you want to, I guess. But you see, now we have this situation where I I can get rid of the problem. See, the problem is when h approaches 0 as a factor in the denominator, then it's times 0, and it's 0 on the bottom. So that's a problem. So now I've factored h out. and do, do that right here. I'm talking too much. No, just h here. Um, so now I've got h and h. Those go away. That's really important because this now turns into, um, what do I have? Negative 6 minus h all over 9 times this. And when you go ahead and substitute, uh, when you let h approach 0, this becomes negative 6 minus 0, 
this becomes 9 times 3 plus 0 squared. So that's going to be negative 6 on top, and then 9 times 9 is what, 80, 81? 9 squared, so 81. Okay, so now we'll double check all, all my work here. So the only other thing we'd want to do is simplify this. Uh, you can divide 3. Um, so it'd be negative 2 over uh, 27. Is your final answer. So we did everything correct up to that point. All right. Um, yay? Nay? Questions? And let's just see if we got, we got this right. So y equals 1 over x squared. That, see, uh, f of a plus h, right, minus f of a. Uh, if you think about that format, uh, a would be the, uh, the point of tangency, that's 3, 3 plus h, and then 1 over uh, a, or, or sorry, f of a would be 1 over 3 squared, so 1 over 9. So the derivative of this, what's the derivative of this? This is actually y equals x squared, uh, sorry, x to the negative 2, so y prime is what? Negative 2, x to the negative 3, and so y prime evaluated at 3 is going to be negative 2 times 3 to the negative 3, and that's going to be equal to negative 2 on top. That is going to be uh, positive 27 on the bottom. So that's maybe a little bit, whoops, a little bit tougher to see there. But that is the format of, uh, that's the definition of a derivative. And the function itself would be the 1 over x squared. So you could get it that way too. And if you don't see that right away, I don't blame you. But uh, you, you should, that should make some sense anyways. If you didn't see that right away, but that should make sense now at the end of the course here. That should make sense. That this, this is the form of, you know, f of a plus h minus f of a over h. So if you can spot the, the function in there, 1 over x squared, 1 over x squared. And the, the point of tangency is x equals 3. Pen properties. Let's change that to a cool color. Um, let's do... Let's do pink. Cool. Cool. It's not that cool. Okay, got it? Um, from the chapter 47.